Hey guys, it's Tessa. Um, you may have noticed today's video and a couple other videos. I've been wearing makeup more recently. Um, I had a party and I wanted to wear makeup for it, so I bought some makeup and then I pretty much worn it almost every day since. But the one thing I forgot to get was makeup wipes or just like general like face scrubbies like I have a cleanser I use I have a uh, like a I have really oily skin so I use something for that I don't know a lot about makeup or skincare so don't don't trust me with that with all of that I don't have anything to scrub onto my face like I can use my fingers but it, it doesn't feel the same as having like a scrubby or something so today's video whoops Today's video is going to be making three different scrubbies. The three scrubbies we are going to make in this video are one, a simple round. Um, it's not as textured as one of the other, as a couple of the other ones, but it will still do the trick, especially since it does the bobble stitch and it has a row of single crochets. So it still does the scrubbing. It's just maybe not as scrubby overall or as like textured overall. Then we have probably my second favorite one texture wise. It is this guy. It is done in the lemon peel stitch I believe, which is basically just uh, do a single crochet, do a double crochet and repeat that all the way across. And then on the next row, anytime you're going into a double, you do a single. Anytime you're going into a single, you do a double. And then finally, probably my favorite, um, and I've done a tutorial for this on, I think, TikTok and Instagram, but I'll do one here as well. This is using a half double crochet, and the only real difference is you're switching back and forth between um, front loop only and back loop only, creating an additional texture to the half double crochet. Uh, but let's get into how to make all of these and all of that. All right, so this first scrubby, is the half double crochet. Um, the easiest way to do this is to chain any number. I'm chaining 13. And then in the third chain from the hook, you're gonna just half double crochet and then do it all the way across. Half double crochet is just yarning over, inserting your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through all three loops on your hook. Um, and then once you finish that first row, you're going to chain two again. You're going to chain two at the beginning slash end of every row. And then you're going to, and then in the first stitch, you're going to do a normal half double crochet. And then for stitches two through ten, you're going to uh, switch back and forth between back loop half double crochet or front loop half double crochet. All that means is you'll either go into the uh, second little loop. So you typically go through both of those little loops that stick up at the top of each stitch. You'll either just go through the back one or just the front one. It's up to you as long as you're switching each time, it doesn't really matter. At the end of that row or on the 11th stitch, uh, you'll do another normal half double crochet. So at the start of every, start and end of every row, you will do uh, normal half double crochets and all the stitches in the middle there will be doing the back and forth. It really doesn't matter how many chains you start with because this pattern works regardless. Uh, and then you'll chain two at the end of that row and repeat the whole process. I did a total of seven rows. That kind of made the perfect square for me. You're welcome to do more. You're welcome to do this as a dishcloth altogether and really use it, that texture as a benefit for you. But this is known as the lemon peel stitch. Like I mentioned in the intro, it's very simple. Uh, this, however, does rely on chaining even number plus one. So I chained 14, I added one more, making it 15 in total. You're gonna skip that first chain, and in the second chain, you're gonna do one single crochet. That is just inserting your hook, yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through both loops. And then in that very next stitch, so the second one, you're going to do a double crochet. So that is going to be yarning over, inserting your hook, yarning over, pulling through, yarning over and pulling through two loops and then yarning over again and pulling through the remaining loops and you're going to repeat you know a single double single double all the way to the end you should be ending with a double then you'll chain one turn your work and you'll repeat that process all the way across and you'll keep doing that over the whole thing this stitch has a lot less gapping compared to some other ones that's why it's really nice to use for dishcloths blankets and things like that 
Um, the less gapping, the, you know, better that people think, tend to think. Um, but yeah. Um, you'll also see a video for this pattern specifically in a blanket form. Um, I think sometime next month. I don't remember exactly, uh, but I have some yarn coming for that project specifically. Um, it's just so I can make a little throw blanket for my husband, but I figured I'd show you guys how to do it. This final scrubby is the single round uh, scrubby. I tried figuring out a way to make these other two be rounded, but it just kind of didn't seem to work out, unfortunately. Um, the way you have to do the increasing it just makes it not really sit or look correctly. However, this one, uh, this final one is pretty simple. You're going to either chain three uh, or chain four slip stitch and then chain one more, or you can do a uh, magic loop or magic circle, magic ring, I think is what it's also referred to, as I show here. Whichever one is you, your preference, you're welcome to do that one. And then you will have seven single crochets in the middle. So again, single crochet is just inserting your hook, yarning over, pulling through, yarning over again, pulling through everything. You'll put seven of those on the first row and then you'll slip stitch into that first stitch and then you'll chain two. To do the bobble stitch is extremely simple. You're going to yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through all the way up to the top of that chain two. So you'll see a large little bar there and then you'll yarn over again, insert your hook, yarn over again, pull through. You'll do this a total of three times. And then you will yarn over and pull through all of the loops on your hook. Uh, you're also welcome to chain one here. Not everybody chooses to, so you don't have to. But you're going to put two bobble stitches in each of the seven single crochets. And then once that's done, again, you will slip stitch into that first stitch to start the next row. You're going to chain one, and then you're going to do two single crochet in each of the bobble stitch spaces. Um, you should have ended the last row with 14 bobble stitches. You'll end this row with 28. And then find, or then for the next row, you will do um, one bobble stitch uh, in every other. So you'll do two bobble stitches in the first space, and then you'll do one bobble stitch and then one bobble stitch. You'll repeat that all the way around. So your pattern should look like you have a V of bobble stitch and then two singles. Um, the final row will kind of follow that similarly, but you'll do a row of single crochets where you'll do two single crochets in the first stitch, and then in the next three you're drawing just a single uh, single crochet. And you'll repeat that across. For the second bobble stitch row, you should be ending with 35, and then that final row should be ending with... Um, 42. And there you have it. All right, guys. Um, my only real final notes regarding these three scrubbies is every, each one of them is good for its own purpose, at least for me. Like, this one's really good just helping get, like, the eye makeup off my face because it's a little bit softer, especially on the little bobble stitches. This one I like to use, uh, or this type of texture I like to use for one of my face washes. It's more of, like, a runny soap. Um, so it'll like slide off my hands or slide down my hands while I'm trying to put it on. But since this one doesn't have really any gapping in it, um, the soap doesn't really seep through the back and it kind of just sits on top. And then finally, my personal favorite is this one. Um, just because it is textured enough to really help feel like the soap I'm using is like getting in my skin. Um, but yeah, that's it for today's video. Feel free to come by next week and see what we're doing. See you next week.